G'day, I'm Jake. Welcome back to Homestead on the Brook. In today's video, I'm going to talk about installing power onto a vacant property. I'm basically going to make the video that I wish I found when we were installing power onto this property. So we're actually going to go for a bit of a walk. We're going to start at the, uh, the pole we had installed. And then over there is the pole that we get our mains power from. So the power comes across down here and into our meter box. We actually have two meters in here. We actually bought this property with my brother-in-law. So we, we got two meters installed so that we can have our own power bills and uh, get charged separately for our power. That way we don't have to work out manually who's using more power and it's just much easier to have um, two meters. We have 260 meters of underground power running through this property. We're going to walk the full 260 meters while I have a chat about the, the install process and um, should be good. We're going to take a walk down to that tiny little grey box down there. That's where our power runs for our house. I'm sharing my experience from a Queensland, Australia point of view. Um, so I'm not sure what the process is in other states. There might be some differences in company names that carry out the different steps in the process, but the, the process should be fairly similar in other states. If you're looking at a vacant property, um, I would strongly suggest that you make sure that the, the property comes with a certificate of supply from the energy company. For us, that's Energex. This certificate will have your lot number and it'll also have the, the pole number that you're going to get your mains power from. Now this is important because um, I'm not sure how much one of these certificates costs to get if you don't have one already, um, but this certificate basically means the power company's assessed the power grid. Uh, you shouldn't have to have any infrastructure upgrades to, to the existing lines that are on your street. And I say shouldn't because sometimes they, they can be a bit weird and you, know, you might have to upgrade something or a transformer, who knows. So I was actually able to find an online map from the power company. It was a bit hard to find. It was kind of hidden in like the back pages of some website, but I actually found uh, like a Google map that actually showed every single pole in my uh, council region. So I was able to find our street, zoom in and click on all three of the poles and match up the pole number to our certificate of supply. You don't have to do this. Um, you can just contact your electrical contractor and I think they'll be able to find out sort of which pole it comes from. But um, obviously that'll take a lot longer. You know, you're waiting on a, a third party to provide you the information. And so I was determined to <laughs> figure most of it out myself. When I first talked to the electrical contractor, he mentioned that once they've done their work and dug the trench and laid the cable and set up the power boxes, it could be anywhere from three to three months to get Energex to come out and, and get connected. So we were quite lucky um, in the fact that we didn't have power for only five weeks. Um, there was actually another job that they did where they started the job before they started our job and they were still waiting to be connected after we got connected. So I think it's just a real, a real luck of the draw depending on where you are in the system and, and who's um, who in the power company is um, doing jobs and, and, what's, and what suburbs. Once the electrical contractor submits their request to connect, it just it sits in the power company system and they will send someone out um, depending on the workload. So I found a company uh, that was happy to quote me on doing the job. Stick around to the end and I'll let you know exactly how much we paid for 260 meters of three phase power underground. I did talk to another couple of companies. This one company, we were a little bit outside the catchment and they gave me a quote of anywhere from 30 to $50,000. I think it was, it was because I was outside their catchment. So they kind of inflated the cost to make it worth it for them to come out if I ended up going with them. Uh, then I found the company that we ended up using. They were fantastic, very knowledgeable, uh, very professional. But I had the electrical contractor come out on the 10th of June and we we walked the line. I sort of did, did a quick uh, mud map of, of how I wanted the power to run through the property. We had early occupancy from the 13th of June, so we're here for a few nights. And we settled on the 18th of June, the Tuesday. And then on the Thursday, the 20th of June, so, so two days after we officially settled, they brought the pole and uh, installed it on the top corner of the property, which was super fast. And that obviously wouldn't have happened 
if I didn't start chatting to these guys and got the quote in mid-May after, you know, four weeks of back and forward talking to them and getting you know, estimates and, and sort of roughly um, plotting out the power. We finally made it down to our box. So in here, all we have is three power points, which we're running our little um, carport setup, which is like our dining, living, um, kitchen area, which I will do a tour of. We've already done a tour of our, uh, our tent, which um, I'll have links in the description of this video for those other videos. Once you finish this one, you can go and, and check out all the other stuff we're doing here. This is the main switch for everything. This is the house, the house switch, which runs to a, a, a set of cables over there. And then we've just got our three power points. So there's no meters in here. The meters are back up the other corner and the, I, like the main fuses and the isolator switch for the, basically the whole entire setup. So we're going to walk out to where this ends. Now uh, this, this whole setup is cemented in. We had a cement truck come out and pour a whole bunch of cement. So it's nice and sturdy. We're going to walk this way now. So this is actually our house site. Very overgrown. Very, very long. Now where is our power to our house? That was a nice little there's a nice little short part here. <laughs> we had the power brought out to here before we even submitted our um, building plans to our certifier for council approval. We kind of just took a stab, took a leap of faith and thought, you know, let's just pay the money now to get it all installed in one hit rather than stop the power there, do our temporary thing and then have to pay for someone else to come out and sort of extend that line. So we had it all done in one shot. And I'm glad we did because we got building approval in November last year. But yeah, we did have this all set up before we even had approval that we could build the house where we wanted to build the house. So it was a bit risky, but it's, uh, it's, it, it paid off luckily for us. Uh, I wouldn't suggest <laughs> that you do that, but um, yeah, proceed at your own risk. Now, let's talk about who connects the meters. So, because I didn't know any of that. Now, once I found the electrical contractor, they kind of take over a lot of the rest of the steps. So the electrical contractor for us submitted the request to Origin for us um, to do the meter install. So they basically just pick the most popular um, power company, which you can change. You're not, you're not locked into any particular power company. Now, the meter install for me was completely free. I guess that was just part of becoming a customer of Origin and having it connected by them because I was a customer, the meter install was free. So once the electrical contractors finish up everything they have done, I think the, the only thing that they don't have is the meters and the fuses. Energex then comes out and does the mains power, which is that black cable that goes over the road. The meter guys come out and install the meters. And once the meters are installed, it's still not usable until for us, until the electrical contractor came and just did their final checks and basically flicked the switch. So yeah, that was five weeks after we moved onto the property. For the first, for those five weeks, we had no power. We were using um, some Blue Eddy batteries, like big battery banks. We had like a little 600 watt and then a bigger uh, 1800 watt. With that, we ran our coffee machine in the morning. We ran a little camping fridge to keep our milk and uh, our mints cold. Uh, we were eating a lot of um, just like, you know, mince patties, egg and cheese, cooking on the barbie, living under a tarp for the first five weeks. Um, it was, it was, it was roughing it, um, you know, little camping, tarp, poles. Um, those initial weeks were pretty wild. You know, we would basically try to uh, use up everything in the day and then in the next morning I'd go out early, go to IGA, buy some more mints, buy some milk and just we just repeated that for, you know, a few weeks until we got a uh, camping fridge. So, we were supposed to get power connected by now. So we've been here for over a month now. And we had a, a week and a half, nearly two weeks of rain, which delayed the conduit lane job by the electricians. Um, and they only just finished it and put the meter box on our private power pole on the road frontage just last week so um energex was supposed to come on friday so today's monday energex was supposed to come on friday and connect the power pole to the grid and then 
um, once that job's done, our origin has to um, connect up our meters so we can actually draw power from the grid. Um, but then they rescheduled it to uh, this Friday coming, but they came out today, so that's good. We should have power either by the end of this week or start of next week. But I'm only hanging out for it because <sighs> this off the bike's rough, man. My fam's back from sussing out the electricians. It's good for morale, having someone show up unexpected. Oh yes, cost. How much did it cost? How much did it cost? Three phase, 260 metres plus another 40 metres out to our house site. We paid $27,731 in June 2024. Now obviously, if you were to have a house right at the road frontage, that cost would be very minimal. The, the cost comes in the, the three phase power. Um, you know, 260 meters of cable isn't cheap. So, yeah. So what, what was the steps? The, the steps were, they came out and we measured the job. We got an official quote. We pulled the trigger. They came and installed the pole. Then they spent a few days digging the trench. And then they prepared the conduit. Then once it was all in the ground, they half backfilled the trench. And then they laid that um, that warning tape on top that says, you know, beware power cables below. Um, and then they covered up the whole trench. They set up the boxes, they winched the power cables through. Energex then comes out and does the mains power, which is that black cable that goes over the road. The meter guys come out and install the meters. It's still not usable until for us until the electrical contractor came and just did their final checks and basically flicked the switch. And job was done. Um, I definitely wish that I could have found this information with a quick YouTube search, but I wasn't able to find anything super helpful. And if you want to keep up to date with uh, all the other projects in the house build, we're about to start fixing our driveway. We can't start building our house because we can't actually get cement trucks over the driveway at the moment. And it's the only access to our build site. I'm going to be owner building most of the house myself. If you found this helpful, a like on the video would be much appreciated. Please consider subscribing if you've made it this far. Thanks for watching. Catch you in the next one.